ever think a 130-year-old synagogue in Chinatown would still be standing? Tina Beth Pina uncovers this month's hidden gem. If you walk down one of the typical side streets filled with Chinese storefronts, you'll see the Eldred Street Synagogue standing tall. Built 130 years ago during the heyday of Jewish immigration, it went through a period of decline, restoration, and rebirth as the museum at Eldred Street. It is the first great house of worship built by Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe. It's a city, it's a state, it's a national historic landmark. It is important both for its history, for its architectural splendor, and for its place within the American Jewish immigrant experience. Starting in 1881, America opened its doors to over two and a half million Jewish immigrants who were fleeing the pogroms and persecution in Eastern Europe. They came to start a new life, one with economic opportunity and religious freedom. More than 80% settled in the Lower East Side. In 1887, they built a grand synagogue in Gothic, Romanesque, and Moore styles. Look around you. It is beautiful. There are 50-foot high ceilings. There's stained glass everywhere. There are beautiful painted designs. Why were they doing it? Because this is the first time they are building a synagogue in their new country and they want it to be grand, they want it to stand out. And it stands with Stars of David mounted from the rooftop announcing their pride in Jewish identities. They wanted it to be beautiful, they were proud Jews and they were proud Americans and they showed that in this structure. Stars abound throughout the synagogue, side by side with five pointed stars floating in the ceiling and eastern wall. Are they stars from the heavens? or from the American flag, maybe both. Amy Stein Milford likes to think back to the time the sanctuary was filled with worshipers. First of all, there were 740 seats here, and you can bet that for the Jewish holidays, like the Jewish New Year, it would have been full to capacity. It was diverse in the pews. Lawyers, merchants, peddlers, artisans, people um, working in the garment industry are sitting together in this space. Men downstairs, this is a traditional Orthodox space. Women upstairs, so there's prayer going on, there's talking going on, there's socializing going on. It's full and lively and vital in this space. This synagogue was a vital part of the community until it went into decline starting with the passage of an anti-immigration law in 1924. Then the Depression in the 1930s, the exodus of Jews to the suburbs post-war, and other immigrant communities moving in the 1950s and 60s. By the 1970s, the sanctuary was in total disrepair, although a small congregation still prayed downstairs. A group of dedicated people miraculously rescued the building, and it took 20 years and $20 million to restore the synagogue to its former glory by 2007. And then in 2010, one last element was added. This is the only contemporary element in the building, and it is the new east window that was designed by artist Kiki Smith and architect Deborah Gans. So it provided the museum with an opportunity to announce that this is a building whose story hasn't ended, but that has a new chapter, this chapter of rescue and revitalization. And so the window represents the 21st century. Now, the building is home to the museum at Eldred Street, which includes not only this magnificent synagogue, but also a new visitor center with interactive displays and a gallery. And we welcome tens of thousands of people for tours and walking tours and cultural events and concerts and school programs and family events. One of the museum's most famous events is its yearly Egg Rolls, Egg Creams, and Empanadas Festival in June. It celebrates the Jewish, Chinese, and Puerto Rican communities of this neighborhood. I always embrace all people who come here um, of all faiths, of all ages, of all cultural backgrounds, and for whatever reason it is, this is a building that has had a storied past, but it has 
a present and a future too that is full of life and growth. And I hope to see it have many more chapters in its story. For Arts in the City, I'm Tina Beth Pina.